So um, now we'll talk about the basic principles of space law. Excellent. So yeah, we there seems to be a lot because there's national law and international law. It's not just space law. So there's space national law and space international law. That's right. Okay. That's right. Um, and and the national law uh, is different in every jurisdiction. So it becomes quite complex okay. potentially. All right. Yes. But we're starting with uh, international space law. Uh, and there are five space specific treaties, starting with the Outer Space Treaty uh, that's been ratified by 110 countries and 23 other countries have signed the Outer Space Treaty. So this, does this mean 110 parliaments or so to speak have ratified it, but then 23 additional diplomats have signed, but their governments haven't ratified it? That's correct. Okay, and that's the correct. expectation is they will at some point? They, they, they will at some point. Um, they may never get around to it. It's just not high on the agenda for their particular parliament. Okay, all right, um, fair enough. There's a variety of reasons why that So this So this isn't necessarily entirely intentional that they're trying to have, you know, their feet in both camps. There's just probably practical reasons this is the case. Well, that, that's true. That's true. Although there are examples. So uh, the, United, the United States, for example, very much supported the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea yep. um, in the negotiation of it. And then when they, the diplomats brought it back to Congress, Congress, you know, had second thoughts about it and did for some time. Um, okay, all right. The same with the International Criminal Court, but that's a whole different... Okay, yeah, story. yeah. So, so there's a, this is kind of a loaded topic then about why these 23 are 23. Yes. Okay, interesting. But, right. but you remember before I talked about um, whether something has become customary that's international true. law. Uh... So, so if um, parts of the Outer Space Treaty have become customary international law, and that is undoubtedly the case that some parts have. It, this doesn't matter then. They're still it gonna, doesn't yeah, matter. Okay. They're still bound. <laughs> okay. Yes. I, I guess that's somewhat good to know, right? You know, yes. we're not uh, appalled to just 23 lazy parliaments not getting around to it. Yeah. No. And, and the other thing to remember is the 110 states who have ratified represent pretty much every state fair, uh, spacefaring nation. Yeah. So the, 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 the majority of work is happening in that 110. Right. Okay. Yes. Then you have the Rescue and Return Agreement. The, the name of the Rescue and Return Agreement is, is fairly indicative of yep. what it covers. Fair enough. Rescue and Return of Astronauts and Space Objects. That has a few less ratifications. Is, is, there, any, sorry, is there any reason why there's less here? We'll, we'll, okay, we'll, okay. we'll come to that. All right, we'll come okay, to that. Okay. You'll, see, you'll see a pattern. <laughs> so the, the, the next one is the Liability Convention. All right, so at least the 98's the same. There's a little yes. bit... Yes. Four or less, but that's pretty much the same. All right, I'll give you that. And, and note the years as well. 1967, no, 1968, 1972. The uh, Registration Convention in 1975, 69 ratifications and three signatures. And then, <laughs> I see there's a drop off in the Moon Agreement. Yes, yes. And then the Moon Agreement. There are actually relatively few states parties to the Moon Agreement. Um, Australia is one of those yep. states parties. Doesn't involve or, or, or none of the major spacefaring states are parties to the Moon Agreement. Um, and uh, a number of the major spacefaring states uh, very expressly don't like yeah. the Moon Agreement. So then this probably would imply, if I'm not mistaken, that while there's probably a lot of bits of common law now in Outer Space Treaty, that is not the case with the Moon Agreement. Well, exactly. And in fact, the United States, there's, there's an executive order signed yes. by the President of the United States during the Trump administration that expressly says we deny that yep. the Moon Agreement uh, is or could become customary international law. And I assume that's a big statement to have. It is. It is. And it was kind of surprising because nobody was suggesting that it, it was customary international law. So yeah. why did you even need to say it? Yeah. <laughs> it's, like, <laughs> it's like, no, I didn't steal the cookie out of the jar <laughs> when my child says that. I didn't ask if they did. It's kind of seems there's a bit of guilt almost in that uh, statement. Right. Right. It's pretty interesting. And, and one of the things that's particularly relevant about this is because it says something about space research resource yes. utilization. Yes. Something that, that extends the Outer Space Treaty, uh, but extends it in a way that, for example, the United States doesn't like. Mm. Uh, so okay. so it's, it's, a, it's a politically loaded issue. It there. seems very much like it. <laughs> right. 
Um, so then there, uh, actually I should go back and um, yes, there is a trend here. 1967 to 1979, 12 years, 12 years to settle five treaties is actually an extraordinarily rapid rate of treaty. Oh, making. really? Really? <laughs> it is. <laughs> Look, I, I mean, I had no idea. So this is actually good progress. And it, I guess, is this driven because space became a very new, really important topic? Was that the most Absol of the reason? Ab yeah. Absolutely. And, and uh, when, for example, Skylab looked like it was going to yes, drop out of the yes. sky. A number of states signed up to the liability convention <laughs> at that stage because they could... Was see. Australia signed onto it before or after? Uh, when, when they got news that Skylab might be coming down, that was part <laughs> of the impetus to sign up to the Interesting. The okay. Um, very fitting they did then after all, Skylab being the famous one that crashes in Australia. Uh, yeah, yes. And I'll cover that uh, uh, yeah. later, actually. Um, but you can see that since 1979, there haven't been any more treaties, and that's indicative of a general loss of appetite in the international community for treaties. International law community or space community or a bit of both? Uh, the international law community or the international community generally, yep. but, but also to some extent the space community okay. specifically. Interesting. 